What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be replacing the thermostat in this 2013 ML350. This applies to all ML350s from 2012 to 2015 and all GLEs from 2016 to 2018. When I was driving, I saw the temperature gauge dropping down to about 80 degrees and then back up, so it was fluctuating. Realized that this thing is 11 years old. It's never had its thermostat replaced. So I'm gonna replace the thermostat and see if that We'll fix the issue. All right, so let's swap it out and see how it goes. This will be a pretty straightforward job. So take the engine cover off, just pop it up. Lift it up. Here's the radiator hose. You're gonna pop this clip off by pulling up. And then you are going to take the belt off and I'll show you how to do that. But before we do that, when we take the radiator hose off, I uh, see the cover down there. I'm going to take that cover off because the coolant's going to come out and leak out. So I moved this to the driveway and I've got a pan ready with some cardboard. So when that leaks out, it'll just leak down um, enough to make a mess. So it'll leak into the pan. So we're going to take that off. If you can't fit underneath it, which you probably can't, just drive it up these ramps, chalk it in the back on both wheels. And then you'll be able to get up, uh, get under real easy and get those bolts. I'll show you. All right, so from the front of the car, You'll find the first bolt here. And you find them right here. And here. Both sides. And then two in the back. Right recess underneath there. So take these two out and you drop it down. And you just take it out from the front and just drop it down. So now you can take it back off the ramp if you'd like and then put the pan there so it'll drop in the pan. So now you can see I've positioned the pan underneath there. So it's gonna trickle down and spill right into the pan. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take the belt off here. And before we take the belt off, we're gonna draw a diagram of the belt route. So when we take it off, we'll be able to put it back on properly. So here is the diagram of the belt wrap, of the belt route. Take the belt off. We're going to put an 11 16th. Got my 11 16th regular socket. We're gonna put 11 16th here and we're gonna tweak it and you'll see the belt loosen up. See how we push down that counterclockwise and the belt will loosen. We can take it right off the tension to pull it. I'm gonna push down, see how the belt loosens and you just take the belt off. Just took the, the belt off, put it aside for now. So yeah, just pull down on that and it will loosen the tensioner pulley. All right, so now we find the radiator hose that goes to the thermostat and there's a pin right here, the metal pin. We're gonna put a flathead screwdriver underneath the pin here and twist it and the pin will come up and that's it. So now you've got the pin here, easy peasy. So after that, you can just, you can just pull the hose out and it's gonna leak into the pan here, as you can see. more will leak in. So make sure you have that pan down there to catch it. This is the housing that the air filter's in. We have to remove this. We have these two bolts over here. If you can take a look at these. This is one, and here's the other one. And this is a uh, E-Socket 10. So we're gonna go grab a, you can't see it, but it's an e E10. So E-Socket 10. Remove these here. Deep socket is the best because this one's sort of in there pretty good. So we're going to remove these. Don't lose the screws, obviously. It's way back in here. It's easy, very intuitive. You'll see one, one here and one there. Just remove them both. Okay, here's the other bolt. It's beautiful. Okay, so here's the tricky part right here. So I think this is the uh, the air temperature sensor here. 
we have to remove that. So first you'll see the little gray, the uh, shine a light on that. You'll see a little gray button here. You gotta click this up. Take a screwdriver and just click this up here. There you go, you see how it clipped up? Then you're gonna have to pull, you take your fingers and you, you squeeze that. You squeeze that and pull it. Next thing you do, this silver bracket here, we gotta remove that. We gotta remove this bracket and you just take needle nose pliers and you just gently remove that and then it should get much looser. See how loose it is now? Okay, so now you gotta take this piece off so you just pop, you just pop it open like that. This should come right out. This one, I'm just using my finger. There you go. All right. Nicely, so put this over here in a safe spot. You get your housing now. This should just come right out. All right. All right, now that you took the air filter housing out, you're left with this piece here. You've got four bolts here, four screws here. You have one, two, you got another one down here, three, and four on the bottom. So the four all together, you're gonna to take these four screws out and remove this piece. And this is a T25 Torx to unscrew this. Okay, once you remove that, now you can take out the thermostat. Everything's out of the way. Um, you've got one, two, and third bolt is under here. Take those three screws out. Remove this. Okay, here's the old thermostat here. Uh, make sure you get on the block and you scrape off all the junk and the corrosion off the sheeted area. And the new one will come with a new gasket. And yeah, just clean it up very well. And um, you'll, you'll have a new O-ring there. So, and um, you're good to go. And you'll, you'll probably have a new O-ring on this side as well, if you don't. This one, right there. Right there. Um, if you don't, you might want to get one. All right, very simply, you could put this the new thermostat right back on. Tighten it up, tighten the three bolts up after you've cleaned the, the gasket area and you put a little silicone on the gasket to seal it. You'll be using a T30 Torx to tighten these three bolts up. Afterwards, get all the soot, any type of particles that got into the throttle body and I got into there. Just make sure it's all clean. Everything's clean. You don't want any debris or particles inside there. And after you cleaned it all up, you can then put this back on and then put this back on. You just reverse what you just did. Put the four bolts back through there, there, this. Remember, this piece is on the side and this piece will be on top. Okay, it was kind of a pain and a hassle to get these, these bolts or these screws through this piece, that piece, and that piece on all four of them. But if you, little, if you wiggle, wiggle, but if you wiggle it a little bit, it'll they'll all go through. All right, now here comes the even uh, harder part. We're going to tighten each piece here. We're going to tighten this piece that piece and this one's gonna be really hard to get in but just work at it you'll get it all right so you'll find it easier if you use this instead of a ratchet so much easier so much easier all right so I used the driver tool for the, with this t25 bit for this screw and for the one down here and that was easiest and then I used I use this ratchet, the T25 bit here, and the one on the bottom. So, and then tweak them all with this one afterwards. This thing's very tight, ready to go, and 
now we're gonna put the air filter housing back on. All right, so now let's put this back in. You'll see there's a little <sighs> U-groove here, and that's, this is where that's gonna lie right here. And there's another U-groove right here, and that's where the other one's gonna just place. See this here? This is gonna sit right here. And the other one's gonna sit right back here. So it's very simple. Make sure they're flushed and they're sitting where they're supposed to be sitting. It just pop right in, beautiful, snug, and then I'm going to make sure this goes over here. All right, so this is snug now, this is beautiful. I have an E socket, and that's E10, put these bolts back in, and you're going to need a deep socket for these. Tighten it either. Just tighten it just enough. Good. Perfect. Good. By the way, as you can tell, I wore gloves halfway through it because I was starting to get really dirty. And there's no need for that. Okay, so we're going to put the sensor back in. Make sure this the plastic piece is up. And we're gonna slide it in as it clicks. And once it clicks, we're gonna push this down so the the, uh, the gray piece clicks. And it's in, good to go. These are in, those three screws are in, air filter is replaced, air duct is back in. So the only thing left is was to uh, put this clamp back on. I struggled a little bit with a needle nose pliers, so I grabbed a pair of pliers like that and just I just grabbed it like this and squeezed. And when I squeezed it, it just popped right back on. All right, so we're gonna put this connector back together. So we're gonna push it in. All right, and then we push the, make sure the grain tab is pushed down as well. So you'll hear it click, and then the grain tab will go in. Just make sure that's on there tight. Okay, we're gonna take our screw and we're gonna screw it back in here. We're gonna screw this back into the thermostat. And as you remember, this is a T30. <clears throat> now you're gonna get a shop towel and you're gonna clean this out. Just cause you don't want any debris in there. There's a lot of debris that's falling in here since we've been working. Not a lot, but just a little bit. We just wanna make sure it's all clean. Just wanna prolong the life of your car here. Make sure there's no impurities that are getting inside. Okay, so as you can see, the new thermostat has a new clip, so we don't have to reuse the old clip. And here's the radiator hose. And as you can see, there's a little, there's an indent where the clip goes. So we're gonna put this in, make sure this is snug in there. And then we're gonna put the clip down and make sure that holds it firmly. Okay, so this is snug in and just play with the clip, make sure it fits and you can feel that it's not going anywhere. So that's firm, that's secure. All right, so my next move is I'm gonna move the pan and the cardboard out of the way. And I'm just gonna hose this engine block down. I'm gonna hose the pulleys down. Just clean it up a little bit because it's got coolant all over it. Uh, just make sure that we get the, any debris, any coolant off the pulleys. Okay, so it's time to get the belt back on. So remember, 
diagram of the belt route before. So we'll just follow this belt route when we're putting it back on. And remember, it's 11 16th, and we're gonna, we're gonna crank down on the tensioner point here. There's a bolt right here. Okay, and just crank down on it, and as you see, it will loosen. So let's get the belt on it, and then that's how we'll get the belt. That's how we'll get the belt around it. So we'll loosen it up and then the belt will slide right on. Just remember, put the belt on, on all the pulleys in the route and leave it, leave the slack over here for the tensioner. And then when you pull down the tensioner, you can just loop it around there. But I mean, if you could, you could basically do it around every pulley once that slack comes down. Okay, we're gonna put the engine cover back on. Just push that down. You're good to go. Now we're gonna add some more coolant, we're gonna top it off, and then we're gonna put that cover back on the bottom of the car. So we lost a lot of coolant during that procedure, so we're gonna add a lot back. So we're gonna use the 50-50, so I just mixed it. You can buy the, the Xerox 50-50 mix already, but I just mixed mine. And then we're gonna add it right here in the reservoir, and we're gonna, we're gonna fill it up right to that plastic piece, right where it meets that plastic piece right there on the top of it. And uh, once we start the engine, it will go down because it's gonna it's gonna fill up. But and then we can top it off again. But we want it right there on the top of that plastic piece. We don't want to go any higher than that. We don't want it to overflow. All right, guys. So we're all done. So we spun around the block a few times. Got that temperature up to about 90 degrees. It pinpointed at 90. Didn't drop any lower or higher. That's what we want. It stopped fluctuating. That was perfect. But uh, the low coolant will come on because the temperature will raise and it's going to drop the the level because it's all going to fill up and get all the air out of there so we're, you're going to have to top it off so stay local top it off and then take a drive and see if you can uh, break any seals or anything i like to add lube silicone lube to all my o-rings uh 100 pure silicone lube it's uh it's the best stuff don't forget that stuff and also do not over tighten the oil coolant line over or a bolt because that bolt is 35 bucks at the dealers and it will break if you over tighten it don't learn the hard way just don't over tighten it you won't need to as long as you use that silicone lubricant in there all right guys and if you do if it does break off just drill it out using a reverse drill that's no problem it'll come right out it's a very small um piece but don't do it it's expensive all right guys hope this helped Again, if you like it, subscribe. We need your help. Subscribe and uh, see you on the next one.